I have decided to film a little bit of a day in the life today. <laughs> So I thought I'd do some pastel cute uh, macarons and things. So I'm going to use those and develop some desktop and foam wallpapers. Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new, thank you so much for being here. I have decided to film a little bit of a day in the life today, more so just in the studio. I am heading off to Southwest Planner Club on Friday, it's currently Tuesday, so I am heading off very, very soon and I realised, how am I going to get a video to you on the normal Monday schedule when I'm not going to be here all weekend? So I thought let's do a little bit of a prep day here, all the things I'm getting up to. I've got mugs to make, I have got things to start packing, stock to check, um, I've got Patreon content to do before I go, so there's a few bits and bobs that I need to get done today. So I thought I'd take you along with me. If you are new here, my name's Adele, I am the owner and creator behind Elise Designs, which is a cute and positive illustrated product business, and I document it on this YouTube channel, and I have done for the last four years or so, so there's lots of content um, to look back on if you fancy it. And if you like what you see here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video as well because it helps tell YouTube that you like my video, essentially, and hopefully more people can find it too. Anyway, I am going to start my work day today by making a couple of mugs. I had my first successful mug made last week. I think it was Friday, so I'd finished filming last week's studio vlog and I thought, I'm just going to get it a go, give it a go. I had a comment from the lovely Donna. Thank you so, so much for your comment. You helped me make this successful mug. Um, it is absolutely adorable. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up, um, but it's so, so cute and it is the best print quality I've had ever doing mugs. Um, so I'll take you through the settings that I used for this in a little while. Now, please bear in mind with sublimation, it's so different for every single person. Uh, it's completely dependent on the type of mug you're using, where you got it from, how they made them, the type of paper, the type of ink, the printer. It really varies for every single person and I have had zero luck with mugs. This, this was the closest I got. Oh, they have stuff stuck to me. <laughs> this is like a seconds mug. Um, you can tell straight away that there is a big difference here it's like faded at the bottom the colors just not popping um whereas this one looks really really good so i'll take you through the settings that i use for these ones i can't remember 100 percent the website that i bought these off there's quite a few different sublimation websites that i've been buying from so i can't remember exactly which one these were off um but they are just your standard 11 ounce white mug white handle um you can get like the colored handles with the colored insides these were sublimated for a very very long time <laughs> I think it was about six minutes in total, but I'll check you through that in a second. So I need to make a couple more of these because I really want to take my first ever mugs to Southwest Planner Club, see what people like them, and hopefully sell a couple. That would be nice. My aim is to take three with me, just of this design. I don't think I'm going to make any more than that. So yeah, let's get into making them. Something that I really recommend when it comes to sublimation is to get yourself a notebook any notebook is fine, but this can be your sublimation notebook. If you're making anything in house that requires you to remember any numbers, any any materials, any kind of tips and tricks, it might be good for you to get a notebook that you can write all of it in. So if, for example, you don't make mugs for a month, when you come back to making them, you can go, oh yeah, that's the settings I used, this is how long I pressed them for kind of thing. It might just save you a little bit of worry and it's also something you can document as you go. I've had, this is an actual page that I ripped out because I didn't think this worked anymore. Um, so maybe one of those spiral bound notebooks would be good for something like this because you can tear out any pages that don't quite work or you can add in little post-it notes and say try this instead. Like it just might be good to have something you can refer to to help yourself. Um, so in terms of settings for my mugs, that worked i let me open up my print settings and again it's going to be different for every single person the settings that i use i have written in here and i did actually change these so i need to i forgot to write that in last time because i updated the brightness and the saturation in the print settings i you i choose let printer manage colors and then i go into print settings i use the on my printer it's called the epson photo quality ink jet so anything that's kind of like high quality options and then you want to set that to high as well 
and then I'm going to go into the more settings and I'm going to turn bi-directional printing off which I believe is like speed I've turned that off so that it like I've read online that it essentially can put slightly more ink down or something like that when it's printing slower or it can reduce the chances of having kind of lines in your print work and then something to remember for sublimation is to have mirror turned on you want that image flipped um so i tend to make my file how i want it to look when it's finished i then flip it when it goes into print and then i also with color correction i change it to custom click advanced and then i use the slide bars to change the brightness and the saturation so for this design specifically and it will change per design um i've got it on brightness plus six and saturation plus four um so i'm going to print that out and i'll take you over to the heat press Okay, so I'm at the heat press. I'm gonna set it for 355 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is around 180 degrees Celsius for 200 seconds, but I'm actually gonna flip it halfway through. So I'm gonna put it in for 200 seconds. When that's finished, I'm gonna turn the mug around and do it for another 200 seconds. It seems like a long, long time compared to other videos that I've seen, but it worked. So that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, so I'm gonna slide it in here to the middle of the machine i'm going to knock the handle towards me and i'm going to click the green button Okay, so I'm just gonna pop a glove onto my left hand. This mug has just come out, so this one's really, really hot, so I'm not gonna do that one yet. I like to get them to a point where I can touch them without feeling like I'm going to melt. Um, so I'm gonna use this little weeding tool, and this is how I'm gonna pick up the tape. I really hope this goes well, <laughs> otherwise all the information I've just given you <laughs> doesn't really count. And then that means I should hopefully be able to pick this corner up. Oops. Ta da! That side's worked really well. Super cute. Here we go. That's come out so cute. Cute is that? Oh, it's a bit of tape there. Let's get rid of that. I'm just gonna wait for this one to cool down before I peel it. Okay, mugs are done. They've come out so, so good. This one's still a little bit warm. Um, but look at that. They are so adorable. I'm so, so happy with them. So now I have three mugs that I can take with me to Southwest Planner Club. Um, I can't pick up three, apparently. Um, because one of them is still very very warm anyway I hope that, that helped if you're thinking about doing sublimation please bear in mind it is a bit of a minefield it is um, it can be quite hard it can be stressful I definitely have had a few tears and be ready to possibly waste a few products which isn't ideal but it is part of the process um, but I have some mugs I hope that's helped um, but also please bear in mind the settings that i've used might not be your settings there are so many factors that go into sublimation and making it work i mean you could literally buy mugs from the same place and one set would be different from the next so 
is a little bit stressful but i've made some mugs and i hope you found it helpful i'm now going to do some patreon content i recorded a podcast last night we spoke about some very exciting things on the podcast um i did write some notes because obviously i'm off to southwest planner club this friday so we chatted a little bit about that a little bit about that how i'm feeling about it and things because i'm a bit nervous but i'm also very excited i also spoke about my first paid promotion which was in not the last studio vlog but the one before um thank you so much for your support on that video um if you have a spare couple of minutes anytime please head over and click the link in the description or in the pinned comment um it would just help a little bit with me like the feedback from the company depending on how many clips I, clicks I get and things but if that's only if you have time please don't worry about it otherwise um I also spoke about secret projects because as I mentioned in last week's studio vlog there is a secret project that I'm working on with my patrons at the moment it's very very exciting something I've never made before something that um is going to be kind of autumn winter related yeah I'm very very excited about it and then also I spoke about the fact that I've made some mugs and it's been so nice that I can share this process with you and hopefully help some of you because I know I've had comments in the past of um, people saying thank you for sharing this like it's really helped um, or thank you for sharing the ups and downs because I'm thinking about taking this adventure and um, it's nice to know that it's not always going to be easy because sometimes I know you watch studio vlogs or you watch people making things and you think oh that seems easy I'll just do what they do it doesn't work anyway I'm going to upload my podcast now and I'm also going to work on some desktop wallpapers and phone wallpapers with the designs that I've got. I've got three new designs for this month on Patreon. We have the Eiffel Tower. They all have this kind of floral kind of aspect to kind of tie them all in together. We have a croissant or pastry um, looks. We've got a croissant, a kind of raisin swirl I think they're called and then also I can't remember the exact name for these but they're like heart shaped pastry swirl things again with those flowers and then also some macarons because they are very i don't know when you type in french pastries french macarons come up so i thought i'd do some pastel cute uh, macarons and things so i'm going to use those and develop some desktop and foam wallpapers just something a bit cutesy and fun uh, to send off my patrons hopefully by i'm hoping to have them done today and i'll schedule them for later in the week um so that i don't need to worry um yeah so let's do that got patron up ready to go it's a little bit later now i've had a cup of tea i had a little break i watched some more virgin river and kind of got quite into it and i watched two episodes oops but i stopped it i come back to the office and i finished my patreon wallpapers i don't know if you can see one of them here so <laughs> it makes me laugh because it says a pastry a day keeps the doctor away right that's what it says and i think it's quite funny honestly so i've made some patreon wallpapers we've got two desktop this one and this one um i think i love this one the most that i've got on my desktop but i also really love the stamps as well i just think it's a really nice way to include everything and it also goes like along with that kind of travel things see i'm not from france but i'm doing something related to france so it's kind of that travel aspect of adding adding the little postage stamps um and then i've got four i think desktop wallpapers so these two here um so we've got the stamps and the kind of quote version of this one and then i also did an eiffel tower and a macarons as well just for people that maybe preferred those designs and want like a more simplistic looking desktop or phone wallpaper i have popped the stamps onto my phone i don't know how well you can see that but it looks really cute doesn't it i'm i'm super super happy with that um so those are scheduled i also made a coloring sheet of the croissant design or the pastry design did an outline i've scheduled both of those so the desktop wallpapers and phone wallpapers are going tomorrow and then the coloring sheet is going on friday it just kind of gets me ahead of the game before i go to southwest planner club because i feel like we I mean but when I come back we're already over halfway through September so I really need to kind of get going with that so podcast went out today wallpapers tomorrow and then Friday coloring sheet so it's a good week of content um my plan now is to tidy up a little bit I have one order to pack I posted five yesterday because I knew that I wanted to do this kind of prep video so I want to tidy up a little bit and start counting things um, I need to find my tally sheets that I did before and rather than making a new one I'm just going to highlight things that I'm taking with me making sure I've got them so I can like 
highlight them once I've packed them. Making sure I've got my display stands, gonna pop some pins onto backing cards. It is getting on a little bit now, but I had a break, um, so I'm gonna carry on for a little bit longer. I just really wanna get a good bulk of prep done today so that I can kind of wrap this video up and I can share it with you. So that's one less thing to stress about while I'm away. So I could just schedule this video so it's ready for you to watch. Um, yeah, just doing it today is gonna help me massively. Also, thank you so much if you've left a comment on last week's studio vlog. It's so lovely seeing so many extra names and things. And I'm going to do a question now. So before we've got to the end of the video, but something kind of at this point, if you could leave me a comment telling me if you could be an animal for the day, what would you choose to be? I personally would probably choose some sort of sea creature because I have a little bit of a fear of the sea. Is it called like thalassophobia or something like that? Honestly, even seeing it on the telly, like deep water, absolutely terrifies me. I just, ugh, makes me squeamish. Um, but if I could be an animal for the day, I'd probably be a turtle or maybe a whale, like a big creature, or even a shark because that way I can kind of move quickly, I can experience the ocean, but because I'm a shark, I wouldn't have the fear because sharks don't have that fear you know so that's my answer probably a shark if i was going to choose anything so that i can explore something that i'll probably never ever explore um in my life um because i'm terrified of water and the idea of going down in a scuba diving gear no thank you anyway so let me know what animal you'd like to be um in the comments just as a little bit of fun maybe we can start doing a question i'll start thinking of things and if you have any ideas let me know as well so yeah i need to tidy up sort my put my mug press away because i actually made five mugs rather than three i decided i was going to make two more while it was working so i've got some more mugs here which i'm so so happy with i think they look adorable yeah let's get organized my mugs are done i'm going to pack them all into the boxes ready to put into the traveling boxes so i've kept the packaging from like the packaging that they came with so i'm going to pop the mug back in the plastic that it came with and then i think i'm going to put in a little bit of this um shredded paper these aren't being shipped, so I don't need to worry too much about, you know, them being thrown around because people are going to buy them in person and take them with them, like, in a bag. So, I think that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop mug in the plastic and then some tissue in the bottom just so it doesn't move as much when it... Ooh, then it doesn't close. So, I'm going to put the mug in the box and then I'm going to stuff the side with some just to prevent any moving there we go and then that closes like that um i'm not going to tape it because like i said they're going with me so they're going to go out on display but then i could put one out maybe have the rest in the boxes i'm not sure um i might put them all out we'll see but i'm just going to pack these all up now give them a little wipe down make sure they're fit and ready to show off i'm really really excited because i've just never made mugs before so i'm just wiping any dust that might have collected because when they're hot they seem to become like magnets for any dust and things so i just wanted to give them a good wipe down and this just means that when i pack my boxes i am ready to just pop 
them in like this and then i think when i've done this i'm going to pop some pins onto backing cards so they're done and i'll get that order packed up as well i'm trying to keep on top of things because i'm going to be closing the shop on thursday evening probably um to make sure that i don't have any last minute ones come through that i haven't got time to pack before i go um so i just want to keep on top of things this week So I'm just making my way through pins and just checking last bits of stock. I need to count my mystery bags. It's all a little bit boring now, to be honest. It's mostly tallying up and just starting to collect things together to put into boxes ready to go. Um, but I just wanted to show with you, share with you a couple of things that I'm doing for the little kind of table gifts. These are like optional, but me and mum have put together some small little cutesy bags of goodies for the people on our table i think there are like eight people on the table so the plan is i'm gonna write a name on the front i'm gonna find my posca pen or something and write everybody's name on here and i'm gonna tie a little ribbon these i actually picked up in home bargains i think they were like five for 90p or something i did have yellow ones but they're way too big for the things that are going in there and i thought it would just feel a bit silly having it all in there mum picked up some highlighters um with very very lovely idea in mind all of these colors other than the yellow go with kind of the small businesses that are going to be on the table so i'm going to be on a table with the lovely emily from emily harvey art lauren from pinderhard designs and beck from rebel jones and we've got a blue a lilac and a pink and then we've got three other colors because there are three people on the table who I don't think I know. So I'm gonna pop those in there, um, just kind of guess to guess what their favorite colors might be. But mum thought it was really cute to have like the brand colors for the business because then they can use them in prop photos and like just on brand, you know? Um, so those are really cute. I think these are from Asda, from Asda. How cute are they? And then in Home Bargains, we picked up uh, just some writing pens. These are just colored writing pens because the plan is to put them together and like tie them with a ribbon put them in the bag just because it's a stationary event you can never have too many pens right we all love a pen so got those i also picked up some goodies for myself um these from home bargains pastel ballpoint pens um how beautiful are these colors in there obsessed um and i got a pencil case <laughs> it's a little lilac pink 
pencil case with little daisies on it. I think it was £1.50, so an absolute little bargain, really. But I do have a pencil case over there, um, but it's got loads of pens in it, and it's huge, and I was like, I don't really want to empty that and put stuff in it when it's not going to be very full, and I thought this would be the perfect size. So I'm going to put pens, my washi tape, I'm going to put some stickers in here. It's just cute, and it's going to be perfect for travelling. So I got that as well sweets for the goodie bags as well these are frutellas um these are vegan i don't know if anyone has any dietary requirements so i thought vegan is the best way to go plus who doesn't love a frutella right i hope people do because i love these and then mum also picked up some funky little erasers um these are from tiger they're just some like cute little marbled effect erasers so i'm gonna pack those up before I go as well or I might take them with me and me and mum can pack them in the hotel room before the event because we're going up on the Friday the event is the Saturday so if it's easier to pack them kind of when we're there then I might do that as well but I'm going to call that the end of the studio vlog I really hope you've enjoyed come along, coming along with me for this kind of prep day we've made mugs we've caught out with patreon content which was a really big to do that i wanted to get done because even though it's not direct prep for the event it is prep in terms of my schedule and just the change in routine that's happening this month so that's really good to have that done i've dumped, sorted more pins and i've just put myself in a very good position to put things in boxes and all that good stuff so yeah thank you so so much for watching this week's studio vlog don't forget to leave me a comment for if you could be an animal for a day what animal would you what would you be i'd love to know yeah thank you so much for watching this week's studio vlog i wish you the loveliest day and i will speak to you next week bye